Hi there, I'm Lee and welcome to iMineBlocks. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to mine Uplexa on your desktop uh, Windows PC. So I'm gonna be showing you the CPU miner so you can use it with Intel or AMD processors. And um, the CPU miner is currently the most efficient miner. Uh, there is also uh, GPU mining variants, but they're not as efficient as the CPU miners. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on today's video, just CPU mining. So let's get started. We'll start by opening our web browser and visiting the official uh, Uplexa website, so it's uplexa.com. Um, also, I'll put all the links in the video description that you need. Uh, if we select this Get Uplexa, it'll take us to a downloads page. You can get the wallet. Um, I've already covered a video on the wallet um, already, um, so go check out that if you need a, uh, a bit of guidance on the wallet set up. There is also a link to the XMRig uh, CPU miner. So this is a, a special version of the XMRig miner. Don't use the regular one. You need this special version because it uses a uh, modified crypto algorithm. So you need to use this specific miner to mine Uplexa. So if you hit that link, it will take you to the GitHub uh, repo for the Uplexa project. And then we're gonna download this miner here. So I'm gonna use the 64-bit version. So we select a file and download it. So once the file has downloaded, you can extract it. And inside you'll see um, a bunch of files that look like this. Um, just to make you aware, uh, also your antivirus might pick this um, file up as a virus or containing viruses. Um, it's very common with miners that you do get these false positives. Uh, if you want to be super sh uh, sure and safe, uh, what I'd recommend you do is uh, run this program in like a virtual machine using VirtualBox or something like that. That will give you an extra level um, of protection. Um, the other thing that I'd also recommend as well is that you run your miners and wallets separately to your, your regular desktop PCs. So inside you're going to see a few files. Uh, the one that we're going to be uh, working with the most is this config.json. So you can open it with Notepad, um, but you might notice that the, um, the formatting is a bit messed up. So what you can do is if you select it and then right click, you can uh, use the open with and then open it with a uh, word pad. You'll find that it um, opens a little bit better. And like I said, the formatting won't be messed up. So with the config.json file um, opened up, you've got this various um, configuration. So I'll talk you through the most important parts that you need to adjust or change to get the best um, out of this miner. So everything at the top, you don't need to change very much at all. The part that you do want to change is this max CPU usage option. By default, that's set to 80. I've changed mine to 100. Um, obviously, change it to an appropriate amount that you want to use to, to whether you want to you know, use your desktop PC in the background with the miner running or however you want to, or if you want to use the full CPU power. So in this case, I wanted to use the full CPU power, so I'll set the 100% uh, usage. The next part is the pool URL. So this uh, miner is a pool miner and you are going to choose a uh, pool that you want to mine with. So I'm currently using hashing.sensor and the pool is all the freeze. I'll show you if you visit this website here. I'll put, again put a link in the video description. Uh, these are the most common pools for Uplexa. You can see at the moment uh, this poolbucks.com has got a a massive amount of the pool's um, hashing power or the network's hashing power, um, it's over 90%. So we really need to work to uh, redistribute this hashing power. So if you are going to start mining Uplexa, um, I recommend mining one of the other pools. Don't use pool bucks until that hash rate comes down. The other pools are very well supported. I've personally had um, interactions with the owners of Fruity Pool and also this hashing.center. Um, like I say, I'm personally mashing, uh, hashing, sorry, mining on hashing.center. Um, I have had payouts and they've been regular, so no problems at all in that respect. So please consider using one of the other uh, pools that are available. Going back to our WordPad. So you want to enter the pools URL in this part here and then the port number. It's pretty much the same port for each of the pools unless you have um, a very high hash rate. The next part is the user. So in between uh, the quotation marks there, you want to add in your uh, your wallet address, your Uplexa wallet address. So if you don't already have one of those, uh, check out my previous video. I'll show you how to create a, a wallet address. So you paste that into there. 
The next part is this pass, but it's not actually a password. Um, in the case with Uplexa and the pool that you're mining to, it's actually going to be a worker reference. So I've just got worker free in there. So that's not my password. It's just um, effectively a nickname. Scrolling down. Um, so this is the next kind of uh, most important part. And it's probably the one that will cause most um, confusion. So when you open the config JSON file, if you go down to threads, you're going to see this um, section here. So there's a couple of different ways to assign uh, your CPU threads. Uh, and it's going to look like this. So for in this example, I'm using uh, three cores of my four core CPU. So I've got an i5-6600 and it's a quad core processor. So what we have is the kind of this breakdown. So this is basically core one, this is core two, and this is core three effectively. So the first option is you've got this low power mode. So you can adjust it from, I think from one to five, and it's um, essentially how many um, threads are gonna be running per core. That's the easiest explanation for you guys. So for most people, it's probably gonna be two threads per core. So we just decide that too. The next option is this find CPU. So this is kind of like a step in or a staggering um, on your CPU cores. You just wanna follow the same sort of system as I've got here. So for your first core, you want it set to zero. Your second core, you want it set to two. Your third core, you want it set to four. So it steps up in twos. So however many cores that you want to use, just add two for each uh, step. So for example, if we wanted to use all four of our cores, uh, we would create a new line. Um, for each new core that you add in here, you can see where this bracket closes. You want to add in comma sorry and so this is going to be our fourth core so this one is going to be the same low power and the core um, the affine CPU in this case would be six on this last core that you add you don't add a comma so make sure it goes like that so you only add the commas if you've got like a new a new thread going so it's comma new thread but on the last one don't add a comma in okay otherwise you'll get confusions the other way to do it is if you want like a really, really simple option, you can basically remove um, all of this and you say threads. Oh, sorry, I've uh, taken out an extra line there. It should be from the square bracket. Threads from the square bracket to the comma. So threads, three, uh, comma. So that's the super easy way um, of doing that. So you can change it to whatever you need. Um, for most people, you kind of want to use one core less than what your CPU has. Um, so like I said, the, on my processor, it's a four core um, processor. So I'm just going to use three threads and that's what I get the best performance out of. So that's the options that you need to um, save there. So we just save that. And you can close that file. So now you're ready to run the program. Uh, when you want to run it the first time in Windows, if you go to uh, right click and run it as an administrator, what will happen is it will um, enable huge pages if it's not already um, applied to you. And then the miner will say to um, restart the miner. Then you can restart the miner normally. Um, huge pages will be applied and then you're ready to mine and get the best um, performance from it. So if we start it up now, you might get a Windows uh, warning. Just click on run. And then the miner starts up like so. So you can see actually in this case, this huge page has actually gone down to, it's just changed itself for some random reason. Um, but anyway, uh, so just to give you a quick breakdown, it's got some information regarding your CPU. So um, I'm actually using my i5 so clock to 4.5 gigahertz and I get about 1600 um, hashes. It tells you how much cache you're using, your number of threads, the algorithms should be kryptonite-upx. Uh, the AV, you can leave it at zero, that's fine. Um, I won't go into that in this video. If you want really um, a lot more detail regarding the threads and um, intensities and things like that, uh, just read the README. But for most people, um, the, sim the simple option will work the best. Um, anyway, as it goes down, you'll see that you're using the hash and center pool. And then further down, you can also see that you get these um, accepted shares. So that's what you're gonna be looking for, accepted shares. And then every so often you'll get a prompt and it'll tell you what your hash rate is. Um, because I'm also recording, um, the hash rate will be much lower than normal. Um, so you can see here, yeah, because I'm recording, it's much lower. It's like a third of normal. You can also use the options. So if you see these commands, if you press um, the H key, 
it will give you um, a breakdown of the, of the um, CPU threads so you can see which each one is um, hashing out. Okay, so I'm just going to close that now because I don't want to, it to mess up uh, the recording. There is also the option to start um, the XM rig minor using the command line options. Um, more about that is in the actual readme. Um, but what I'll probably do is uh, create a few uh, dummy batch files for you to start with. So I might just start with um, creating uh, one, two, three, or four threads or something. So just so you guys can quickly um, test and configure those. Um, just bear in mind that obviously if you are going to use my um, sample batch files, just make sure that you update your Uplexa um, address unless you actually want to mine to my address. Um, so that's it for this video. So I've covered pretty much um, all of the basics. Obviously, uh, one other thing you can do as well is if you go to the um, the Paul's website. So it was um, hashing dot center. You got um, lots of various pool information, but if you go on to worker statistics, you can see I've got my Uplex address. It's already up there, and then you can sort of see the your current hash rates. So this is all your pool stats, um, amount that you've been paid, current earnings, etc and also you've got your work details. So that's how you track um, your results and obviously all that uh, those funds are gonna be transferred to your wallet um, afterwards. But if you just wanna kind of keep an eye on your pool stats, that's how you do it with um, hashing.sensor. The other pools are very similar. Obviously you just visit those and enter your, uh, your Uplexo address is effectively your um, kind of your ID. Okay guys, so I'm gonna leave it there for this one. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed watching. If you have any questions or comments, put those in the comments area below. Um, I'll also link to the Plexa Discord chat if you guys um, get stuck or run into any problems. Um, you can also join on there. There's lots of um, helpful guys and they'll be happy to help you out with any of your problems. Uh, sorry, one other thing just very quickly I almost forgot. Um, if you have um, your, once you're up and running mining, um, include your benchmark. If you visit this website, which is uplexamining.com forward slash hwbenchmarks, um, it's actually broken at the moment, but hopefully by the time you view it, it works. There's a big uh, spreadsheet of all the other miners, and what they've done is just kind of a compiled list, so each person can kind of um, see what the other person's results are in terms of mining. So that's a good resource, so if you're not too sure what your performance might be, um, take a look on here first, and you might be able to sort of work out what your hash rate is or what you're likely to get um, in terms of performance. So that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.